Although they are rarely mentioned, accounts of female warriors in history are increasingly researched and studied. Among the most well-known historical figures are Hua Mulan of 6th century China, Itagaki of 13th century Japan, the Celtic queen Boadicea in the 1st century and Joan of Arc of 15th century France. Of martial artists, however, the accounts are still rare and generally become a mix of historical facts and legends. One such story is the Shaolin abbess Nguk Mui, her student in Wing Chun and their roles in the conception of a martial art called Wing Chun Kung Fu. Hi, my name is Chris and this is the second part of my free video series about the greatest martial artists of all time. If you haven't seen the last episode, be sure to check that out as well after this one. Although Ip Man is widely credited for bringing awareness to the style and made it famous, the originator of Wing Chun was a woman. She was Shaolin abbess. Nkmui, a master of Shaolin Kung Fu, used her knowledge to invent a way to take advantage of the weaknesses found in other Shaolin systems. The true identity of Nkmui, also called Five Plums Nun, the only female practitioner of the Five Elders, has been under debate within Chinese martial arts circles for hundreds of years. Legends and stories of her origins varied. According to the oral tradition of Wu Mei Pai, Abbas Nkmui was born as a daughter of a Ming general who was sent away by her father to the south when the Ming dynasty was under the verge of falling into the invading Qing to survive and carry on the family traditions. This would have made her a young woman in 1648. In this tradition, Nkmui was already an accomplished martial artist who fully developed her practical style in the Forbidden City. She invented the patterned upturned logs to develop her balance and leg strength, an equipment still used in Wing Chun training centers today. She took refuge in the White Crane Temple, which according to legends is located in Guangxi province, instead of the Shaolin Temple in Hunan province, and became an anti-Qing rebel, teaching her style only within the temple, using very fast counterattacks and effective movements from Bodhidharma and Qigong. This style is said to evolve into White Crane Kung Fu, a style Nikmu is largely credited for. The White Crane Kung Fu became regarded as one of the deadliest forms of Kung Fu in entire China at the time. It became so deadly that it was the style of choice for people trying to kill highly skilled master in martial arts. Nick Mui had managed to invent a style of Kung Fu that could kill the top martial arts practitioners of their age. But we cannot talk about Wing Chun without mentioning Ip Man himself. 1893, Ip Man was born as the fourth child of a wealthy family in Foshan, Guangdong. Often bullied as a young kid, Ip Man began to learn Wing Chun at the age of 12 under a master called Chan Washun. Chan was a 57-year-old man at that point, and Ip Man would be his 16th and last student. Young Ip only received three years of training from Chan before he suffered a mild stroke in 1909 and wound up retiring to his village. Chan's second eldest student then continued training the young Ip Man from which it said he had most of his knowledge about Wing Chun from. In the 1950s, Ip Man began to run what has become to be known as one of the first Wing Chun schools. His business was poor at first, due to Ip Man's students only staying a couple of months. He had to move his school twice, and in that span of time, some of his students were proficient enough in Wing Chun to open their own schools, which had the side effect of increasing Ip Man's fame. In 1967, Ip Man and some of his students established the Wing Chun Athletic Association. This association was to help Ip Man with his financial burden. However, the association still exists today and serves a much larger purpose. Ip Man's legacy is strong even nowadays. It is kept alive today by his millions of Wing Chun practitioners under his lineage. He always thought that I didn't come here to prove which is better, Chinese or Western boxing. All people have different status in life. I don't believe that one person's integrity is worth more than the others. I hope we can start to respect each other. Bridging into the 19th century, we find Chikara Khan. Born in 1860, young Chigoro was small and frail and often bullied by other children. In order to defend himself, he began studying martial arts. He started going to various body therapists, assuming they should know the martial arts teachers around. But with the diminishing popularity of the samurai, finding the right teacher was harder than expected. Chigoro eventually became a student of the Tenshin Shioryu school of Jiu-Jitsu. However, Kano was not satisfied with the emphasis on physical strength and brute force in traditional Jiu-Jitsu and began to develop his own style of martial arts that emphasized emphasized technique, efficiency and mutual benefit. In 1882, Kano founded the Kodokan Judo Institute in Tokyo, which became the first formal school of Judo. He introduced several innovations to the martial art, including the use of colored belts to indicate rank and a system of competition that emphasized safety and fair play. Under Kano's leadership, Judo grew rapidly in popularity and became an important part of Japanese culture. Kano himself became a respected educator and was appointed as the first Asian member of the international Olympic Committee in 1909. In addition to his contributions to martial arts, Kano was also a leading advocate for physical education and sports in Japan. He believed that these activities could help to promote physical health, more development, 
and international understanding. Sensei Kano later stated that I therefore anticipated that practitioners would develop their bodies in an ideal manner, to be outstanding in matches and also to improve their wisdom and virtue and make the spirit of judo alive and their daily lives. We should be able to move properly in response to our opponent's unexpected attacks and should also not forget to make full use of every opportunity during our practice to improve our wisdom and virtue. These are the ideal principles of my judo. Kano later died in 1938, but his legacy continues to live on through judo and the many students and teachers he inspired. Today, judo is practiced by millions of people around the world and is recognized as an Olympic sport. Shikara Kano is remembered as a pioneer in the development of modern martial arts and a champion of the values of respect, discipline and mutual benefit. This three-part video series took me literally countless of hours of researching martial arts history, scripting and editing. And I truly love what I'm doing here. And if you find this video informative and entertaining so far, I would be highly grateful for just a little like. This is only one small click for you, but for me as a creator, it means the world. And if you decide this is something you want to support for free, then there's nothing better for you to do than kick the subscribe button and explore the history of martial arts further with me. Just a few years after Chigurakano died, in 1868, Funakoshi Gishin was born in Okinawa, the birthplace of karate. Okinawa, the birthplace of karate. He was a weak and sickly child, yet his parents brought him to karate training to make him stronger. Funakoshi began studying karate at a young age, under the hard eyes of two of the most famous Okinawan martial arts masters of the time, Yasutsune Itosu and Anko Asato. He quickly became known for his exceptional skills and deep knowledge of the art. In 1922, Funakoshi was invited to demonstrate karate at the first national athletic exhibition in Tokyo. This was a turning point in his life, as it brought him to the attention of Japanese public and helped to establish karate as a legitimate martial art in Japan. In the years that followed, Funakoshi became a leading figure in the martial arts world. Today, Shotokan Karate is perhaps the most widely known style of karate in the world, and Funakoshi is often attributed as being the father of modern karate. Funakoshi's approach to karate was influenced by his background in Okinawan martial arts and his deep commitment to the principles of humility, respect and self-improvement. He believed that karate was not just a physical practice, but also a path to personal development and self-mastery. In addition to his contributions to martial arts, Funakoshi was also an accomplished writer and philosopher who would reportedly go for long walks in the forest where he would meditate and write his poetry. He wrote several books on karate including Karate Do, My Way of Life, which is still considered a classic in the field. One of his principles states, apply the way of karate to all things, therein lies its beauty. Funakoshi died in 1957 at the age of 88, but his legacy lives on through Shotokan Karate and the millions of students and practitioners around the world who continue to study and practice his teachings. He is remembered as a pioneer in the development of modern karate and martial arts. At the same time, another founder of a worldwide martial arts system lived in Japan. Born in 1883 and son of a landowner, Morihei Ueshiba was a weak and sickly child. In his early day, he witnessed how his father was beaten by a group of people. Having experienced such brutality to his own family led him to promise to become a strong warrior in order to protect his loved ones. As a young man, Ueshiba studied a number of martial arts including Judo, Kendo and traditional Japanese Jiu-Jitsu. He also became interested in spiritual practices and began to explore various forms of religion and philosophy. In 1915, he met Sokaku Takeda, a master of Japanese Taito Ryu Jiu-Jitsu. Ueshiba was so impressed of the skills of Takeda that he even built a dojo in his own house to invite Takeda as a permanent house guest. Ueshiba became so good in his martial arts skills that even advanced practitioners of different martial arts came to train under him. He was so respected that people People referred to him as O-sensei, translated as the great teacher. In 1925, Ueshiba used the term Aikido for the first time for his martial art. In addition to his contributions to martial arts, Ueshiba was also a deeply spiritual person who believed that Aikido was more than just a physical practice, but also a path to personal growth and enlightenment. He wrote extensively on his philosophy and his wisdom for a world based on harmony, mutual respect and non-violence. This might also be because of World War II. Morihei Ueshiba taught that the way of the warrior has been misunderstood. It is not a means to kill and destroy others. Those who seek to compete and better one another are making a terrible mistake. To smash, injure or destroy is the worst thing a human being can do. The real way of the warrior is to prevent such slaughter. It is the art of peace, the power of love.
We cannot leave Japan yet until we have learned about Masutatsu Oyama, commonly known as Mas Oyama. He was born in 1923 in South Korea and moved to Japan at the age of 9. Oyama began studying Chinese martial arts at a young age from a farmer, but he also trained in Kendo, Judo and Karate. In March 1938, Oyama left for Japan, following his brother who enrolled in the Imperial Japanese Army's Yamanashi Aviation School. In 1946, Oyama enrolled in Waseda University School of Education to study sports science. Wanting to be the best instructor he can possibly be, he contacted the Shotokan Dojo operated by Chigo Funakoshi, the third son of Funakoshi Gishi, which we know by now is the founder of Shotokan Karate. Oyama became so devoted to karate and so strong physically that he did not only defeat various rivals, but was also known for fighting bulls barehanded. Allegedly, he battled 52 bulls over the course of his lifetime, supposedly cutting off horns of several and killing three instantly with one strike, earning him the nickname of Godhead. In 1957, he created his own karate style known as Kyokushi, as it was quite common for his students to injure themselves in practicing fighting. Kumite. Along with practicing fighting that distinguished Oyama's teaching style from other karate schools, emphasis on breaking objects such as boards, towels or bricks to measure one's offensive ability became Kyokushin's trademark. But he was not only a rough man, but also emphasized on self-development. Highly influenced by Musashi's The Book of Five Rings, he wrote over 80 books himself. He was passionate about sharing his karate and knowledge and taught that the heart of our karate is real fighting. There can be no proof without real fighting. Without proof, there is no trust. Without trust, there is no respect. This is a definition of the world of martial arts. In the next episode, uploaded the following week, we are going to be looking at some of the world's most influential martial artists of modern times and their stories. We are going to see how movie cinema changed the martial arts world forever and why this is influencing everybody of us practitioners. Which martial arts style is lacking in this list? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Punch hard and lift heavy.